Namibia, Southwest Africa. Its landscapes, mostly uninhabited, haven't changed in millions of years. Hollywood movies have filmed these mountains to depict prehistoric life. Talking of prehistoric, there's an animal that traces back to those times still living in this area, but it's in danger. And in the semi-desert wilderness of northwest Namibia's Kuneni region, it's not easy to track down. That's where he was walking. That's the spoor. See, three toes. Meet Simpson Uri Cobb. He's head of the Save the Rhino Trust. I love my work. That's why I'm here all the time. Simpson is a legend in rhino conservation. He started repairing cars for the Save the Rhino Trust before working his way up, becoming a tracker and studying conservation biology. There's one young calf, he will run. Bloody run off. Today, though, we've missed what we're looking for, a black rhino, a species at serious risk of extinction. In this case, a young calf who ran off at the first inkling that humans were in his area. We keep trying. Oh, there's quite a rhino activity here. You can see the spoor where they have been browsing on the trees and also on the shrubs, so, um, yeah, they are out. Ah, the wind is okay. Um, we don't know what's going to happen on top there, but so far, as you can see, the wind is going this way, and the animals are up here. So we have to go this direction. Black rhinos have poor eyesight, but if they get the faintest whiff of you, and they're also very sensitive to noise, this is all you're likely to see. After the first day, we literally had 10 seconds of usable footage. But then, on the second day, finally... But then, 10-year-old Tuta seemed to hear something. What happened was during the translocation. Whoops, 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 whoops. We have to move backwards, we have to move backwards. backwards. Tuta begins to charge. We retreat in disorder, and Simpson, knowing what to do, throws a stone into Tuta's path. Simpson jokes with his fellow trackers. I mean, for it, I don't know if it's coming there, and if it's really coming, it's coming like on 45 kilometers an hour. So it's fast, you'll never outgoing it. You see, that's the thing about the black rhino. It's mostly a solitary beast. It's nervous and aggressive. Look at these incidents from national parks in Southern Africa. Note the bloody wound in the backside of the rhino on the right. The 140 black rhino living in the Kuneni region, an area larger than Portugal, are unique. This is actually the last vast area, open area, free, where you found free roaming black rhinos on Earth. Unlike in the national parks with their numerous tourists, Black rhinos in Kuneni are not fenced in. They're truly wild and very wary of human contact, although many have been dehorned to protect them against poaching. On the right is a bull called Don't Worry, with a cow, Mara. It's day three. Simpson tells me he once had to stay up a tree for two and a half hours after Don't Worry chased him there. Here, he sprays to mark out his territory. Sound effects courtesy of Simpson. Overall, there are fewer than 5,000 wild black rhinos in existence, all in Africa. They're officially classified as a critically endangered species. Black rhinos here are specially adapted for the semi-desert conditions. They can go for three or more days without water, and they eat plants where they can draw some moisture 
such as the Euphobia damarana, that are poisonous to most other animals. Here's a cow, and you can see the scratch mark on the back. You see that scratch mark? Why this? They are decimating. It's the bull's hoofs. When they climbed up, it seems that's scratching on there like that. Mating is obviously vital if the species is to survive. Black rhinos couple up for just a few days at a time. And like 17, 18 months later, then the cow will have a calf. But even if the calf is born, that's not the end of the story. There are still plenty of challenges. We've really facing drought in this area for the past four years, I would say. Uh, this is the worst I have ever seen in, in my 25 years of working in this area, you know. Yeah. There should be water here. No even single sign of water here. <laughs> Human threat is there, but now the drought is also another threat, you know. So we're facing two threats at once, and they're both hammering us, actually. Yeah. In a severe drought like this, a cow may well not be able to produce enough milk and the calf will starve to death. The second threat, the human threat, is poaching. So far, Namibia has not been as badly affected as neighboring South Africa. Illegal hunting is driven by the huge demand for rhino horn in parts of Asia, where it's sold quite falsely as a cure for diseases like cancer. Rhino horn is literally worth more than gold in this market. It started off in South Africa, and I mean, the numbers just raised there until 1,600, I think, per year. If that happened in Namibia, if they kill 1,600 per year, then that's the end of the rhinos in Namibia, actually. Recently, poachers have moved across Namibia and eventually found their way to Kuneni. As well as surveillance from the air, Save the Rhino Trust trackers are out every week monitoring and photographing black rhino and entering them into a database. They also look out for suspicious vehicles and activities. Thirty years ago, there were only 60 black rhinos in Kuneni. With successful conservation efforts, that trebled. But now, in the last few years, that number has been dropping again because of drought and poaching. So what is the way forward? I can guarantee you, if you don't have the support of the community on communal land in conservation, then you might as well forget. It's not working. The most effective way to protect the black rhino is to bring in the local community. Bonds Roman has been locally recruited as a guide for tourists who come to Desert Rhino Camp at the heart of Kuneni. The camp is run by wilderness safaris who in turn collaborate with the Save the Rhino Trust. It's a win-win-win. A limited number of tourists bring in money, which finances the monitoring and protection of the black rhino, and also creates jobs for local people. This community system or conservation system whereby you, the local, make a decision. You are involved with the things you love together. And <laughs> that makes it actually a successful thing, you know, the ownership that you feel. And so Simpson and his team can keep on tracking. As you can see here, black rhinos tend to use the same dung pile as they go into the water or coming from the water. This is very fresh, new, still wet, wet. There's quite a lot of fiber in it here. And then you found sticks, because they browse as they browse quite a lot on, on trees and shrubs. It's day four and we're on the right path. Simpson has found fresh rhino dung. And now, a surprise. Tuta, the cow seen on the right, who chased us off just two days ago, has been joined by 33-year-old Ben for mating. 
With Ben's protection, she's wary, but not so nervous. Our goal, actually, is to have as many as possible black rhinos roaming in Northwest Kulina region in the future. That's what we want. As Ben and Tuta walk off into not the sunset, but a valley in the soft midday light, the future of the black rhino, living free in the true wild, goes with them. <laughs>